All right, welcome to another episode of Calicoders. Today, I was wanting to talk to you about this technology I learned called App Sync from AWS. Uh, it's got a number of features, but the one that I found really useful was the ability to subscribe to changes that are happening in the cloud. Uh, so your application on the front end can be more event driven and react accordingly rather than to have to go query and pull for certain data sources periodically. All right, so first let's take a look at the original implementation of the dashboard. Now what you see here is a simulator for an iPhone app that I built called PUBG Matches. And on the right is a dashboard web app that I built just for me so that I could monitor the usage of that app. And the way it works is whenever the app requests new match data, it makes an API call and ends up recording a record in a Dynamo database table. And then the dashboard then reads that data periodically. And we'll be able to see that here in the network console. Um, there's one right there. And in 10 seconds, it'll make another call. And the, the problem with that is, is that, uh, and there's another call. And then if I request more data, we won't see that data show up here on the dashboard for up to 10 seconds. And so you can see how that's inefficient and also not timely and how something like AppSync can really come into play here because it allows you to subscribe to changes on the dat on the back end. And you can do that, those subscriptions in a customizable fashion. So you can only be notified about certain kinds of data. The solution I came up with was to incorporate AppSync. An app sync sits between the Lambda function and the database in this case, and the dashboard then creates a subscription via a WebSocket to app sync so that it can be notified of any changes. So now, whenever the app sends a post request and triggers that Lambda function to then trigger app sync to write to the database, app sync then sends a notification message to the dashboard saying, hey, there's been a change. You might want to go get new data. And then the dashboard goes and hits the API just like it always has. All right, so in order to incorporate AppSync, first we need to go to our AWS console and find the AppSync page. Of course, you'll need an account for this and then we'll go create one. Using the wizard, click start. We'll call it PUBG Matches App Sync Demo. And then we'll come down here to the fields. Uh, we need an ID field. That's what App Sync uses to synchronize the data between the client and the cloud. Uh, in addition to that, we'll say date, and we want that to be an int. This is going to be epoch time in seconds, which is the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. And then the other field will be a uh, name, and it will be a string, and uh, both of those fields will be required. And then here it shows you the table that it's going to create on the back end, and the defaults there are A OK. -OK. All right, and then we'll call this PUBG Matches uh, App Sync Demo. Click Create. And now it's building the App Sync instant, it, instance itself, as well as the Dynamo database on the back end. All right, it looks like it's completed. Um, We'll get into some of these things like schema and settings here in a moment. But for now, let's go into the code and wire up our code to use AppSync instead of uh, writing to the database directly. Well, if you remember from the architectural diagram, there is a lambda that sits between the 
API and the Dynamo database. This is the code for that Lambda. And remember, it's responsible for either getting records out of the database or writing records to the database. So the entry point to this Lambda function is this handler method. And the first thing we do in this handler method is build a body a status code and a header. Because remember, we have to build this response object so that we can pass the response back to the API. The API can pass the response back to the calling entity. so They can know uh, how things went. Uh, next, we'll need to pull out the uh, method and the path out of the event object that was passed in to this Lambda function. Uh, this will let us know whether we need to be getting records or posting a record. Uh, and then we switch on that route based off whether it was a get or a post. Uh, the get code is here, which we will come back to later. But for now, we're wanting to write a record to the database. So the first thing we do is we pull the JSON body out of the post event. And then from there, we extract the name out of that JSON object. And then we create an instance of the date at this current moment, which is a uh, time in seconds since 1970 uh, to epoch time. And then there used to be code here for writing data to a Dynamo database, but we're not going to do that anymore because we want AppSync to do that for us. So that's what we're going to fill in here is the AppSync code. And then lastly, we populate the body so that we can uh, pass it back to the calling entity. All right, so the first thing we need to do to get a reference to our app sync object in the cloud is uh, get a reference to this app sync library. Then we need to create a client from that app sync library. And then the, uh, this needs to be a new. And then the constructor for this takes a couple fields here. Um, it takes a URL, which is the URL to our instance of AppSync that we just created. Uh, we'll fill this in in a moment. Uh, the AWS region, which in our case is US East 1. And then the authentication uh, object, which is, um, it needs a type which we're using an API key, and then a, uh, the API key value, which we will get from the console too. Let's do that right now. All right, come back here from our app sync area in the console, we go to settings, and then this is the URL to our app sync instance. Copy that, paste it here, and then we need the API key to authenticate ourselves which we do here. All right, now we have our client that is ready to access our AppSync instance in the cloud. So now down here in the post, we're gonna get rid of this comment and uh, we're, we're gonna ask AppSync to write that record for us. And in the AppSync world, that is called a mutation. We are updating something, we're mutating data. So we say client.mutate and this takes two arguments, uh, mutation, and we'll need to pass a mutation object, and then uh, variables for that mutation object. All right, so now the mutation object is uh, the details of like, hey, what do you want me to mutate? And in our case, we're going to use a GraphQL object to tell AppSync exactly what it needs to be mutating. So let's do that in another file. Uh, we'll end up doing something like this. Const mutation object equals, I'm just going to write null for now. Um, but this, this is where we'll build up our mutation object. Uh, and we'll, we'll do that by referencing this uh, file we're about to create here. So we'll create a GraphQL folder, and then uh, patients. All right, and then so the first thing we need to do to create a GraphQL object is say, const GQL equals 
GraphQL tag. And then uh, we need to export something. We'll call it create PUBG matches demo um, object equals uh, GQL. And then now we're going to need the GraphQL syntax. And I'm going to get that offline here. We have a mutation keyword, and then we have a name of our mutation, and then some input arguments, and then this is kind of like a function that then calls this here, create PUBG matches AppSync demo. Uh, now kind of make a mental note of that as we go to our AWS console, and we go to our schema, and this is our mutation schema, and you can see here, this is the schema for our create mutation. And that matches with what we have here. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the GraphQL syntax, but if you kind of just follow this pattern, you should be good to go. All right, so now remember, we're, we're exporting this uh, object that we just built here. So we're going to go back to our index.js. And we are going to, um, well, first, we have to get a reference to our mutations. JS file. Now we have our mutations. Come down here. And there is a reference to our um, mutation object that we just, um, our GraphQL object uh, that we're using as a mutation object. Next is the variables. Uh, now, if you again go back to our, our thing here, this is the, what we called our input argument. So that is our variable name. And now, what is the type? So again, let's go back to our, uh, our schema here. So you'll see here, there's this PUBG matches app sync demo input. That is the data type that the mutation expects. And that data type is defined right here. As you can see, it's just a JSON object that takes an integer date and a name string. So we'll just build one of those. We'll call it um, uh, variable, I guess. And we'll say uh, date. And we already have the date up here. So we'll say date and then a name field, which again, we have the name up there as well. I'm going to switch these up just to keep consistent with up above. And there's our argument that we can pass to our mutation. Uh, that's not how you do it there. All right, that should do it. At this point, our Lambda is calling mutate on our AppSync client. And from there, AppSync takes over and it writes this object to the Dynamo database that is corresponding with the AppSync instance in the cloud. Uh, however, there's a few things that got me. And I'm just going to uh, fill them in right now. And I'm going to explain those at the end of the video. Need an await right there. Need to say disable offline. And then we need uh, all right. Those are the three gotchas. Took me a lot of time to figure those things out. All right, now I think we're about ready to uh, test this bad boy. All right, to test this out, we will upload it to the cloud and give it a go. I will put the command I used to update the Lambda. I will put that command in the description. Uh, basically, it just zips up the Node.js application and then puts it in an S3 bucket and then tells the Lambda to go reference that S3 bucket for its source code and update it with that. So we'll wait for this to finish. All right, now that that's finished, we'll go up to our Lambda or our uh, AWS console, we'll go back to the Lambda, go to the code 
or test, I should say. Uh, there is a test method already built for us. Uh, we can see the task is not defined. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! All right, let's try it out. We've got our app on the left, and we've navigated over here to DynamoDB in our uh, AWS console. We've got our demo table, which currently has no records in it. And so now we're going to request data and then see if we got our record in the database. And sure enough, there it is. Looks like our post is working. Uh, the next thing we'll have to do is work on uh, the client side dashboard subscribing to these changes and then updating itself accordingly once it gets one of those notifications. All right, now we'll take a look at the code for the dashboard web app that we have. This is a React application. And one of the first things you'll see here is in this component did mount, which is a React lifecycle method that fires whenever the page is rendered and ready to go, basically. And the first thing it does is it makes a fetch API call uh, to get the records of all the refreshes that have occurred. And then it JSONifies those results and pass those, passes those results to a get metrics routine that's down below that basically <clears throat> takes all that data and puts it in the right spot on the page. And then after that, you see it sets up an interval every 10,000 milliseconds, every 10 seconds to do that exact same API call and that whole routine again. And this is where that inefficiency happens. So now that we're going to be subscribing, we no longer need to be pulling this API every 10 seconds. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, and then we'll come up here and uh, just like before, we're going to need a reference to our app sync instance in the cloud. So we'll need a client and we build that client by getting reference to the uh, app sync library. So I'll write that code real quick. You've seen this all before. All right, now that we have our client, we can use that client to subscribe to any create events that occur on our AppSync instance in the cloud. And we can set that up here in the constructor. So we'll say client.subscribe, and that method takes an object with a query field, and then we'll say, uh, we'll give it a uh, on create subscription object or query, whatever, object, um, which we have to build still. And just like the mutate before took a GraphQL object uh, with that contained GraphQL syntax for mutating, uh, this case we're going to be creating a GraphQL object for subscribing. So we'll come up here and we'll create a GraphQL folder um, not in the components, we want it in the source. Okay, so GraphQL, and then we'll say subscriptions. And then in here, we'll say import GraphQL from GraphQL tag. And then uh, export fonts. And we called it and create equals GraphQL. All right, and this is where we get into the GraphQL syntax. I'll paste this from offline, paste that here. And this is similar to the mutate syntax. Uh, we have a keyword subscription and then the name of our subscription. And then inside this subscription, we invoke this uh, on create method that is referenced from our schema up in the um, in the app sync console. You can reference that schema and see that there. We've got that. 
And now we will need to import that. We'll say import, import from Okay, now we are subscribing to any create events that occur on our AppSync instance in the cloud. So now the next thing we want to do is uh, tell the code what to do once we receive a notification that one of these events has occurred. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll create a variable here called um, uh, create observable. We have observed that a creation has occurred. And then say create observable dot subscribe. We call subscribe again. I know it's kind of weird. And then we say next. Then we give it a, a method that has input as an input argument. And the first thing we'll do is we'll just log that uh, triggered from subscription. And then the next thing to do is we want to make another API call, just like we did here in the uh, component did mount method. Uh, yeah. All right, that's it. We should be good to go. We'll give it a test. And at this point, we should only be making API calls to get new data when new data has been written out in the cloud. All right, let's give it a test. We'll invoke the request for new matches on the left and boom on the right we see them right away and if we look at the console here we see triggered we saw the original updating which was on the initial load and then triggered from subscription which then updated again and we can sit here all day long and you won't see another one unless somebody comes in here and creates yet another request. All right, so as promised, I told you I'd go over these three things that really got me good while I was building this uh, migration into using AppSync. And uh, they're all centered around the fact that our Lambda function is what is doing a lot of the interfacing with AppSync uh, because AppSync was generally designed to be uh, interfaced from uh, the client side browser. Uh, and one of the things that a browser has is an a fetch API. Uh, behind the scenes, AppSync uses this fetch API, and it doesn't have that natively when it's ran from a Lambda function. So that's why this require cross fetch polyfill uh, import is needed. Uh, otherwise, you'll get some cryptic message that you have to Google the error message. That's how I figured it out. Uh, the next thing is uh, another feature that AppSync has, which is really cool, which is in the browser, let's say that a user loses their internet connection and they create a record or two or three, and then they don't have any, any connection to AppSync because they're offline. But then once that uh, their internet connection comes back online, uh, AppSync will just synchronize up and those three records will get update uploaded to AppSync and recorded uh, in the cloud. Uh, but when it's ran from a Lambda function, you can't do that because um, it's, it's not a browser, it's not online or offline, it's just ran and stops, ran and stops whenever it's needed. So for that, you need to say disable offline is true. And then the third one, this one was really interesting, was uh, in this post. Right here. When we call client.mutate, I didn't originally have this await on here. So to understand what's happening here, you have to know uh, how lambdas work. Uh, lambdas, when they're invoked, they get ran on the cloud. And then when they're done, they die. So what was happening was we were calling client.mutate. It was happening asynchronously. The Lambda would just continue on and write, uh, run this code. And the, the callback uh, was never running. 
Uh, but what was interesting was if I ran the code three, four, five, six times really, really quickly back to back, I would actually start to see some of these records in the Dynamo database. Uh, but then it finally dawned on me that uh, I needed to await for this asynchronous call to complete before moving on, and then things uh, happened as they should. Uh, but anyway, you know, that's that's what being a developer is all about, uh, figuring out all those tough gotchas like that. Uh, so that's why it really helps to have a deep understanding of everything you're working with. All right. Thought it might be time for a cold one. Hope you enjoyed the AppSync video as much as I enjoyed making it. It's a pretty rad tool. Um, it's an age-old problem of having your front end be, you know, updated in real time uh, without having to go fetch for new data. So. Anyway, uh, like I said, hope you enjoyed it. Till next time.